Welcome back. This is my old toolbox. I made this about 10 years ago based on a design I bought at an antique shop. This tray system is difficult because it's hard to get at the bottom tray the most. And then the trays sit around the shop and knock over. Time for a new toolbox. I'm using half inch Baltic birch. I'm going to make a toolbox similar in configuration, but the bottom two trays are going to be drawers so that I could pull them out. So everything could stay in place at all times and I can access what I need when I need it. And uh, there I just determined the, the depth of the box front to back and that's determined by the 14 inch drawer slides that I used. So overall this is going to be approximately 16 inches front to back and about 36 inches left to right and about 14 inches high. And here I am just cutting up some more of the wood. I'm using that big giant chunk of steel as my stopper, you notice. Works pretty good, as long as you don't bang the wood into it. Of course, you'll move it if you do that. So, this is going to be the top bar or the front of the top tray. And I'm going to finger join everything together. And I just wanted to make sure my finger joints fell cleanly so that there was a finger joint at the top and the bottom consistently. And those next two layers are going to be the drawer fronts and the bottom. And I wanted to make sure the grain passes through all of them consistently. So here you see the grain passes through. That's the top, middle, and bottom. And now this is the top tray or the top of the toolbox. And then that's one of the sides. So I'm just doing a test to make sure that we're looking good. And one thing I did is I razor cut the back so that I wouldn't get blowout. So I put a razor cut line exactly across the back. I'm just showing you. And then here I'm doing the same thing. I'm razor cutting, slightly razor cutting the veneer so that when I do this, I don't get blowout on the other side. And I don't get blowout on the other side. Another way to combat that too is just to put a zero clearance, but you can see it's difficult to do that on my thing. And now this is the the back of the toolbox and in about a minute I'm going to put it all together you'll see how the configuration works here it is just a dry fit now I'm gluing it together I'm just using regular yellow wood glue when I worry about the strength of yellow wood glue, I always ask myself, has anything I ever made come apart in 20 plus years? And the answer is, I can't recall anything falling apart that I made with yellow wood glue ever. That's a little marking gauge. I'm using that so that I could set what's going to hold the top tray up. I make a lot of these little marking gauges just so I have a consistent line. Here it was important. So that's going to be the top tray. Here I am cutting that piece of wood, gluing it into place, and clapping it. I have a habit of gluing things together and letting them dry, and then I put screws or nails into it. It keeps things from shifting around while I'm trying to screw or nail it. Now I'm putting the drawer slides in place. By having the drawer slides in place, I'll be able to determine the width of the drawer more accurately. Because the drawer is going to be between the drawer slides. And since I have them on hand, I just put them right where they're supposed to live. There you go. Now I'm making what's going to become the sides in front and back of the drawers. Still sticking with the half inch Baltic birch. Baltic birch has about, I think, nine layers or ten layers. It makes a nice edge looking plywood. Using my steel stopper again, I need two shorts and two long. That's what you see me doing here. And there we go, I have all my parts. Now I'm doing an important aspect here. I'm putting a rabbit in it, or a dado, at the very bottom so that it can accept the draw bottom. I cut one side of it, and then I cut it up from the bottom of each piece. So I end up with a 
area to accept the draw bottom around the entire drawer. And whenever I make a drawer, the front and back are trapped by the sides. So the front and back are going to have this dado that runs wild, but you won't see them because one will be facing into the box and one will be facing against the draw facade. Again, I glue my drawers together. This is an experiment. I never did what I'm about to do here in the video. I'm gluing everything together, letting it dry overnight, and then I come back with the domino joiner. And I essentially use the dominoes as nails straight through the side. You see I have a little marking gauge made up of wood. I'm using it so I get a consistent placement. This is something I did by accident once. I put a domino through from the inside out. It came all the way through and I thought, oh, that might be an interesting look. So here I'm using it. Just using dominoes as nails, basically. And then showing them so they look good. Now I'm gluing my draw bottoms in. Again, the front and back of the draw won't be seen. So I'm using nails or actually crown staples right there. The drawers are going to carry a lot of tools, so it's important that they're heavy. So the bottom is also half inch thick Baltic birch. Now I sand those dominoes flush, and I add dominoes to hold the drawer up. Now I'm adding dominoes for the drawer bottom. I know I'm going to get a letter from Festival saying that's not how you're supposed to use it. I'm fully aware of that. I'm just experimenting. And again, this is the top tray. And it's important that that front have a good connection there. I didn't have the available space to put a, a hanger underneath it. flush cutting all those domino heads. And now this is when I put a drawer in like this. You see I put a spacer underneath both sides of the drawer to keep it parallel to the table. And that's a way for me to put them in that usually works for me pretty good. And then I'll put a spacer on top of this drawer. Make sure everything works. Now I put a spacer on top of that drawer and put in the next one on top of it. That's typically what I do. I just cut spacers and just have them hanging in space. It usually works pretty good. Everything always needs fine adjustment, but works good. And now these are the same two pieces that the grain follows through that are going to be the two draw facades. Trim them to fit inside the walls now. I have to trim both sides because I want the grain to stay matching. And then those are pieces of styrene I'm using for spacers. I tack glue it in the middle and then I add screws in from the back later once it's dry. And there we are. And I, I just wet it just to show you that the grain does fall through. I also wanted to see what it would look like. Now I have a piece of one and a quarter inch oak, white oak. I'm making the bumpers for the bottom. For time, I eliminated me cutting the bevels just for time in the movie. But I used the chop saw to cut the bevels. Everything's glued in place, but then once the glue dries, I put screws in everything. And then I cap it. Later on, I show you how those are made. That's a plug made from the same wood. Now I'm onto the top, and you see the top? I have that wrap it in the, in the top bumper so that it glues from two sides so it glues right onto the corner. And again I'll put screws in the corners of each one of these as well. So there's a lot of glue surface area. This is an important step. I want to make sure that that whole top frame is, is flat and level. So I make myself this really long sanding board. There's only sandpaper on one end. But having a long board keeps the thing totally flat, and this way the whole top bezel will be, become totally flat.
Now I'm going, making what's going to be the frame that carries the, the piece for the top lid. And here I have my router table installed into the uh, wing of my table saw. And I did a couple of passes. I did one more pass off camera to get a little bit more of a cleaner cut. And so now I have that rabbit that will hold the plywood in the top center frame. But first I wanted to give this little bezel here so that when I do put the frame down, it stays locked on top of the bottom frame. So now that's glued in place and now I'm putting my frame together. You see me using the chop saw to make all the cuts. And sometimes they creep up on a cut, so if it's not perfect, they creep up on it. It's better than going past it on your first shot, so creep up on it. Take several small passes. I'm just using CA glue here to hold these together until I get screws in them. This piece of wood was bent, so I put a bunch of relief cuts in it. And I just put a big piece of veneer over it so you couldn't see the relief cuts. You'll be able to see them inside the toolbox lid but that wasn't sitting flat on the frame. It was kind of like a knurl or something in the wood. So now here I am. This is my, my lid. I had to go into a second sheet of plywood. You can never have too many squeeze clamps. And this is the plug cutter, just showing you how I did that earlier on. And that lid sits perfectly on top of the bottom one because I put that little bezel to hold it in place. Sanding it. That's a white oak, thick white oak, about one and one eighth inch thick. Now I'm making my pockets for the hinges. Doing this is always difficult, but it helps when you break the grain up into small, tiny pieces like I just did. These are hinges I found at an old garage sale a long time ago. When you break the grain up into tiny little pieces, it does exactly what you need. And then you just got to trim the bottom flat. And you see me using a hole drill, uh, a drill to, to drill the center hole right in the hinge. That's really important. It's designed to center the hole right inside the hinge hole. Now I'm putting the top on. Perfect fit. That bezel inside is really key. It keeps everything nice and centered. I bought this pretty hardware from a store nearby. I bought two matching handles for the left and right from the same line. And I just grabbed a piece of scrap wood and I measured it down from the from the top bumper. And I just used that as my spacer on both sides. And there it is. I didn't put any locks in it because it's in my personal shop. And I've put locks on things before, and I have a, a steel toolbox that locks the drawers when you close the lid. And every time I want to go into one of the drawers, I have to open the lid. So I left all that out because this is my personal toolbox. And I hate the idea of having to open the lid to get at the two drawers underneath. I always end up leaving the top drawer open all the time. The, the top lid is always wide open on all my toolboxes so I can get in those drawers anytime I want. So now I just eliminated that. And there it is. I'm happy with it. And you see how many tools I have now. They're a little bit more spread out. I got all my hand planes there. And then all my chisels are actually accessible. I will in time make dividers and set things in certain places. But for the length of this video, I just wanted to get the, the toolbox done. I can actually have my hammer in the top. Just something I could never do. There it is. Thanks for watching.